There are a few important things you should know about navigating. As a vessel operator, you're responsible for knowing and following navigation rules, known as rules of the road. In Alaska, we follow international rules as well as all other regulations. You're also responsible for acting in a reasonable and prudent manner. And if it's safe to do so, you are required to provide assistance to other boaters. One of the first things you should be familiar with are aids to navigation, or atons. There are two main types of atons, lateral aids and informational or regulatory markers. Lateral aids are red and green markers that guide boaters. The red markers are even numbered and can be triangle or pear shaped. Green markers are odd numbered and can be cylinders or squares. When entering a harbor, going up river, or heading in a northerly direction, the red markers will be on your starboard side and the green on your port. A good way to remember this is red, right, return. The second type of atons are informational markers. They are white with orange symbols and black text. They advise you of controlled areas, like no wake zones, or provide warnings and other helpful information. And as we discussed earlier, each boat is required to have the ability to produce an efficient sound signal. A horn is a good choice. One short blast indicates you're altering your course starboard. And two short blasts indicates you're changing your course port side or to the left. Keep in mind when it comes to navigation, unlike the highway, no one has a right of way in the water. Rather, there are stand-on or giveaway vessels, which basically means that if a risk of collision exists, certain vessels are required to stand on and others are required to give way. We'll take a closer look at what that means. A giveaway vessel is required to alter its course and speed to avoid a stand-on vessel. A giveaway vessel takes early and obvious action to keep clear of a stand-on vessel and makes other vessels aware of its intentions. Meanwhile, a stand-on vessel maintains a constant course and speed while observing the giveaway vessel and taking action to avoid collision if needed. In general, vessels that are restricted in their ability to maneuver are the stand-on vessels. This includes sailboats, commercial fishing vessels, and anchored boats. Here are some specific examples of how stand-on and giveaway vessels should respond in certain situations. When meeting head-on, both vessels become giveaway and should pass each other port to port. When navigating in a narrow channel, vessels should keep to the starboard side of the channel, and boats under 60 feet must not hamper larger vessels. When passing, the vessel that is overtaking must give way to the vessel that is being overtaken. The giveaway vessel should also use appropriate sound signals to indicate its intentions. Boat operators must also know what to do when meeting another boat in their danger zone. A danger zone is the area that extends straight ahead of your boat to 22 and a half degrees aft of your starboard beam. If you see another boat approaching you within this zone, you are likely the giveaway vessel. Vessel operators are responsible for taking readily apparent action, allowing plenty of time and distance to avoid a collision. Slow down or stop to assess the situation if needed. The final navigation rule we'll discuss is the use of navigation lights. As covered earlier, navigation lights must be displayed by all vessels between sunset and sunrise, as well as during periods of decreased visibility. There are several different types of navigation lights. The masthead light is white and is located over the fore and aft center line. There are also side lights. Green side lights are placed on the starboard side of the vessel, while red lights are on the port side. And, as the name indicates, the stern light is located on the stern of the boat. On many smaller boats, the masthead and stern lights are combined into one all-around white light. Lighting requirements ultimately depend on the size and type of your boat. As a vessel operator, it's important to remember there are many different types of watercraft and many types of water activities taking place around you. Personal watercraft, or PWCs, are very common on Alaska's lakes and even oceans. In Alaska, PWCs are defined as boats. They have all the same rights, responsibilities, and equipment requirements. Water skiing is another popular activity. When water skiing, the skier must be observed at all times. All boats towing a skier are required to have either a rear view mirror or a designated observer over the age of 12. Be familiar with diving flags. There are two types of flags used for diving. When you see these flags displayed, stay at least 100 feet away. 